From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Sergeant Franklin, San Diego Police Homicide. Oh, thanks for returning my call. What are you doing in Tijuana? Following a lead on the sinking of the Jolly Roger. What else? I still think that yacht was sunk by her owner, Paula Zanagian. You're not alone, Sergeant. Listen. Yeah? Bert Parker of the insurance company was suspicious. He held up the claim, so he was killed. Hit and run. I know. Lieutenant Smith of the Coast Guard was helping me with the case. Now he's been killed, also hit and run. We know. We're working on it. Jan Penny, who was Parker's secretary, is helping me too. Get it? I get it. I'll assign a man to protect her immediately. Good. But Dollar... Yeah? What about you? Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, San Diego, California. To Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Jolly Roger fraud. The sinking of a palatial yacht of that name and a couple of murders connected therewith. I thought I was going to Southern California for a vacation. You know, a couple of easy weeks at La Jolla, sitting around in the sun, doing a bit of skin diving... Maybe even some personal investigation to see if the publicity pictures of the contents of some of those bikini bathing suits were really true. But I ran headlong into what looks like a very, very fraudulent insurance claim. $460,000 worth. Claimed by an international troublemaker named Paulus Zanagian for the loss of his yacht, the Jolly Roger. Only the crew were aboard when it headed out toward the Coronado Islands on a test run. A tryout for a lot of new radar equipment. After a big explosion that caused the Jolly Roger to burn and sink, only one man came back. I told what I knew about him to Sergeant Franklin at San Diego Police Headquarters. And then the poor lad died there in the hospital in Tijuana, huh? Yeah, but not until he told the senior medical a couple of things that make me surer than ever that the owner, this Paula Zanagian, planned the explosion and sinking. Evidently, Sergeant, the captain took a time bomb on board. And let himself get blown up with a yacht? Now look, Dollar. No, not that easy. He'd have been able to get off before the time bomb exploded if he hadn't been hit over the head by a falling radar mast. Oh, oh, I see. But what I don't see is why Zanagian had his ship blown up in the first place. Well, if you've read the papers, you know that the Swiss and Dutch governments have put all of Zanagian's funds under lock and key. Oh? Yeah. In spite of the millions Zanagian has made off his international arms smuggling rackets, his fomenting of revolutions among the smaller countries, he suddenly found himself without enough money to get over there and do whatever is necessary to free his money. Somebody finally caught up with his international racketeer. That's right. His credit, of course, isn't any good anywhere. Big yacht, sure. But he didn't have enough money to pay his way back to Europe. Unless he could collect for the loss of the Jolly Roger. And when Bert Parker tried to stall on settling the claim... Parker didn't last long. Then I came into the picture. I talked to Zanagian. Yeah? He told me if I didn't see that his claim was settled immediately... Well, he casually mentioned Bert Parker's sudden demise. Dollar, I wonder if there isn't some technicality on which we can hold hey, that guy. Jan Penny, who was Parker's secretary. Yeah? Jan has been helping me on the case. Result of warning threatening both her and me. And you know what happened to Lieutenant Smith as a result of his giving me a hand. Have you got somebody keeping an eye on Jan? I'll get Tommy Golden, one of the best men on the force. Good. And he's smart enough to keep her from knowing he's watching over her. Fine. Things have happened so fast since I got here that I haven't had time to check thoroughly with her on the background of the whole case. Well, it really shouldn't be too disagreeable a job, Dollar. Huh? I've seen her. What's your next step? Well, first, what progress have you made in finding out who ran down Lieutenant Smith? Same story we got when your friend Bert Parker was run down and killed. Yeah? The few witnesses just weren't on the ball. In each case, it was a black Buick sedan, 54 or 55. Nobody saw a license plate. You mean there was none on the car? Apparently not. Traffic division's going to have something to answer for. Unless the license plates were hidden just during the time of the... Well, murders is probably the right word. Possible, probable. So forgive your traffic detail. Needless to say, we're checking every public garage in town and every car in the streets, but beyond that... Dollar, we're just as sure as you are that Zanagian himself is behind all this. He's not only a man, he's an international organization. Oh, brother, don't tell me. For all I know, you're one of his boys. Oh, now, wait a minute. He's known every move I've made since I got here, almost before I've made it. 
When he met me outside Coast Guard headquarters and tried to stop me from going down to Tijuana, I thought, heaven help me, that maybe Lieutenant Smith was one of his boys until Smith was killed. He's had somebody on my tail every minute since I hit this town of yours. I'm sure of it. But I can't spot him. Dollar. Yeah? We feel the same way about Zanagian that you do. We know that wherever he goes, he has, well, it sounds corny, but call him henchmen hanging around with him. Maybe it's just one or two, or maybe it's a dozen. And we've tried to spot him, but no luck. Certainly none of the crew of the Jolly Roger were among them, or he wouldn't have let them get blown up. Or maybe he doesn't have any little helpers. Maybe he does everything himself. You know, it's funny you should say that. It was he himself who took out the policy on the Jolly Roger. It was he who personally made the claim. It was he who drove his car around to meet me at Coast Guard headquarters. As a matter of fact, it was... Ah, that's impossible. Can you tell me why? Oh, because he alone couldn't have known about my coming out here, my every movement. He'd be crazy to drive the hit-and-run cars that killed Parker and Smith. And after all, there were a couple of husky characters standing around quietly in the corners of his penthouse suite when I called on him. One of them, six foot two, black hair, and a scar from his right ear nearly to his chin? Yeah. He's been watched every minute he's been out of Zanagian's hotel room ever since they got here. A short, heavy-set, wormy little man? That's right. Him, too. We got nothing on him. Except that we know they're working for Zanagi. What's your next move, Dollar? Oh, if I had any sense, I'd do what I came out here to do. Have myself a vacation over in La Jolla. Forget this whole thing. Let the insurance company pay the claim on the Jolly Roger. Let Zanagi get out of the country and forget it. You'd be able to forget the threats on your own life, Dollar? Yeah, and I'd be able to... Hey, wait a minute. What about Jan Penny? I told you I'll have a man looking after her. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess the best thing I can do is take her over to Bert Parker's office, have her open the files, and see if I can find something there to get to work on. Incidentally, Dollar, she drives a black Buick. I hate to say it, Sergeant. Have you checked it out? I probably shouldn't have thought what I thought about Jan when I asked that question. I was sorry I had when I reached her apartment a few minutes later. Who is it? Johnny Dollar. Oh, Johnny, I'm so glad. I was worried about you. Has something happened, Jen? I was worried about you. That's all when you told me you were going down to Tijuana alone. Well, I was worried about you. Oh, thanks. Hey, look, Jan, let's get down to business. Did you go down to the office uh, this morning? Yes, I took a cab down there right after breakfast and spent the entire day. Uh-huh. Were the files on Zanagian's policy on the Jolly Roger intact? Well, yes, why do you ask that? And nobody bothered you there? No, except... Except what? Johnny, it's the reason I'm so glad you're here. What is? All day I've had the feeling I'm being followed. I've... Well, maybe you are. Because of the warning over the phone, the one I told you about. And you still don't know who it was? No, but Johnny, the warning was for you, too. If you don't lay off this case... Is that the way the voice on the phone put it? Yes, and it threatened me if I helped you. <sighs> Look, Jan, you want to back out while you're still in one piece? You know what happened to Bert Parker when he tried to buck Paul as an agent? I, I love Bert, Johnny. He was the kind of man you are. Honest and good and... Oh, Johnny, why don't you get out of this case? Pay him off, anything. But don't risk your life on it, too. You really mean that, don't you? Oh, you're fine, and... Don't you see this madman, Zanagian, will stop at nothing to hurt the people who oppose him. And if you keep on... Even if it means forgetting about finding out who killed Bert Parker? Yes, Johnny, yes. If it means putting your own life in danger, settle his claim, anything. How about you? I'll go away. I'll go somewhere else and try to forget the whole thing. Oh, Johnny, listen to me. I'm listening. It isn't worth it to take the risk you're taking. Jan, it's my job. Look, why should you worry about me? Because I... Even if I have only known you a few days, I... I don't know, maybe it's rebound. Maybe I'm acting like a baby, but since Bert was... Oh, Johnny, I'm so alone, and I'm so lonely. <laughs> Jan was a very pretty girl. Soft, warm, lovely. We had a drink or two and talked about a lot of things. 
The kind of things I'd planned to talk about to some charming girl on the vacation I'd planned but wasn't having here in Southern California. I might even have forgotten about cleaning up the case and going on to La Jolla. Why don't you make the company pay them off, Johnny? Forget it. So you and I won't be in danger from this man. Suspicion. Why can't a guy relax and enjoy a situation like that? Jan. Mm -hmm. Come on, honey. Mm -hmm. Look at all you. I gotta get out of here. Hmm? Look, I've got a hunch, and in this crazy business of mine, when you get a hunch, you better act on it. Oh, no, Johnny, tomorrow. Oh, no, honey, look, I'm, I'm going down to police headquarters. Johnny. The one thing I haven't checked on, the one person who was connected with Bert Parker. But police headquarters this time, and I don't know. Jim Franklin, he said he'd be there all night. But can't you check Sorry, me? Jen. <laughs> Leave me here all alone? Well, you come with me. We'll grab a cab and go down there together. Oh, all right. Then we'll come back here? Depends on what I find out. Then I'll wait for you. Only why don't you take my car? It's right down in the parking place just outside the building. Okay, sure. Here, I'll get you the keys. How will I know which one is yours? It's an old black Buick in parking space five down there. Just had a new paint job. You can't mistake it. Here. Okay, thanks. Jan, didn't you say something about taking a cab down to the office this morning? Because of the fresh paint in my car. It was so foggy this morning. I wanted it looking nice in case you wanted to use it. Ah, you're a rascal. See you later. I kissed Jan goodbye for the time being and left. I hadn't the least idea in the world of contacting Sergeant Franklin at that time of night. But I had to think this thing out. Suspicions, pure and simple, about a lot of things that might explain how Zanagian had known my every move since I arrived in San Diego. Yeah, that was it. Get out on the road in the fresh air alone and think of it. The black Buick was parked in the lot in Space 5, all shiny in its new coat of paint. Yeah, new paint that might cover up any marks a hit-and-run killer made. I was about to close the door, turn the switch, and take off when I noticed that somebody, the car painter perhaps, had left the hood open. I stepped around to the front of the car to slam it down when my guardian angel, or whatever it is, told me to take a good look inside. I'm glad I did. Glad I'd noticed the hood partly open. That I hadn't turned on the key. Because wired to the ignition was a bomb that would have blown me to kingdom come. Now, here's our star to tell you about the final intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the wind-up, where the obvious becomes only too obvious. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 